In Creo Parametric, you can use the Mechanism Dynamics option, or MDO, to perform dynamic analyses. And to show you some of the capabilities, I wanted to play around with the old Physics 101 example of a frictionless block moving on a surface with forces and springs and dampers. Let me orient you to my model. Here I have my assembly and there are two components, one representing the base and then we have our block. If I edit definition, I can show you that this block is assembled with a planar connection and in addition to selecting the surfaces, I define the translational axes and the rotational axis just to give myself a starting position. I've enabled the regeneration values as well, so I just hit regenerate or control G and everything goes back to this initial position. Speaking of which, let's go to the drag components icon and create a snapshot to represent the starting position. I will call it start and then click the close button. To get into mechanisms mode, I will click on applications and then mechanism and we can see that here we have our planar connection displayed in the graphics area. The first thing that I am going to do in here is create a force on the model. Let me turn on the display of my datum points. I have a few points in here that will facilitate the creation of the force and the spring and the damper that I am going to use. And I'm also going to turn on the display of coordinate systems so that you can see the coordinate system for that block part. And I'll use that for defining the force. So to create the force, I will click on the force torque command. And be aware that if you do not have MDO, the mechanism dynamics option, this icon as well as many others will be grayed out. So let's go to force torque and you can see that the references tab is in red. It wants to know what is going to be the driven entity. I'm going to apply the force at a point. You can see in purple the direction that it is acting. Here in the motion direction, you can see that it is acting in the Z direction, which is sideways. I want it acting in the X direction. So let's change this to zero and change X to one. Now you can see the vector that the force is acting in. Next, let's go to the profile details. You can see that our driven quantity is force. And from the drop down list, you also can do position, velocity, and acceleration from here. And the function I'm using is constant. Let's do a force of 10 newtons. And by the way, just to give you an idea of the size of the model, this block is one kilogram and it is 100 millimeters on a side. I kept the numbers nice and easy. And now I'll go to the properties tab. This is going to be called motor one, even though it's actually a force. So let me change this. I'm going to call it force and hit the check mark. And so that is the first quantity in the model. Let's create a dynamic analysis to see the result of having this force act on the frictionless block. I will go to analyses. And then from the mini toolbar, I will click on the new icon. And for the name of the analysis, let me call this my dynamics analysis for lack of originality. For the type, I will change from the default position to dynamic. And for length and rate, initially let's have this run for four seconds, which is much more than I need. I'm gonna crank up the frame rate to 50. And now I'll go to the motors tab. I have no motors in the model. And then the external loads tab. Here's that force that I just created. One other thing, I want to use an initial condition, which I haven't defined yet. Let me click OK out of the definition dialog box. And then I can click on the initial conditions icon. By default, it wants to use the current screen. I will use the drop down list to select the snapshot that I created and then click OK. Now let me expand analyses in the mechanism tree. 
I can select the dynamic analysis and edit definition and then use the radio button to say that I want to use the initial condition that I just created. Let me zoom out a little bit and then I will click the run button and based on my joint axis settings it ran out to the end and then just stopped. I don't allow it to go much further than the length of the base part itself. So again we have the force acting and the block just goes all the way to the end. Let's click the OK button. Now to make some changes to that, let me start off by regenerating, which I can get to from my right mouse button menu, just to move the component back to its initial location. I don't need to see my coordinate system anymore, so let's turn it off. And now we will throw in a spring. To create a spring, I'll click on the icon in the ribbon, and now it wants to know the references. And so I'll select a point from the base part, hold down the control key and select a point from the block. If I click on the options tab, here we have the option to adjust the icon diameter, but I'm happy with the default value that Creo Parametric selected. Let's take a look at the other information that we have in here. So the current position or current length of the spring is 200 millimeters and this U value is the rest length of the spring. In other words, it is neither compressed nor extended. It has no potential energy in the spring at this particular distance. And then we have the K value. That's the spring constant. You have a drop down list that you could use to change the value of the spring constant. And I'm going to start out with a value that will be a little bit stiff for this particular model. Let's use a value of, let's try 0.5 newtons per millimeter. Now I will hit the check mark and then I can expand analyses to get to the dynamic analysis and then click on it and use the green flag to run it. Yes, I'm going to overwrite the results that are in session. So here you can see, rather than the block going all the way to the end of the base, it just oscillates over a narrow range. Now we can get more motion by editing the definition of the spring. Let me make it a little less strong, lower stiffness. Let's now hit the check mark and then go to analyses and use the green flag to rerun the analysis. Yes, we'll overwrite it. And there you can see how it is oscillating back and forth. So now we have the spring working. Let me regenerate to go back to the initial position. So again, we had a force, then we put a spring in there. Hey, let's continue with the classic physics 101 problem by throwing in a damper and a damper is going to, like the name implies, dampen the motion over time. So I need to select the references, and the references will be points just like I created for the spring. I will select one point, hold down the control key, and select the point from the block. Then we have the properties tab over here, and this is just where you can change the name of the damper. But the critical quantity that you specify for the damper is the damping coefficient. And once again, we have a drop down list to change the values that we're going to use to express it. My model units are by default Newton seconds per millimeter. And again, let me go with a little bit higher value to begin with. I'll start off with 0.01 Newton seconds per millimeter and then hit the check mark. So now that we have the damper in there and you can see an icon in the graphics area denoting the existence of the damper, let's go back to our analyses and then use the green flag. Yes, we're going to overwrite the results. And then you can see it was like, wow, it just, you know, basically extended and then stopped. We have too much damping in the model. So I will expand dampers in the mechanism tree and then click on it and edit definition. And let's change it so it's not nearly as strong and hit the check mark. Let's go to the analyses and 
Before we go any further, I'm going to increase the duration because I think this is going to have more damping effect in the model. Let's click the OK button out of the Analysis dialog box. I could have run it just from there. Let's use the green flag. Yes, we will overwrite the results. And so there you can see how the damping works over time so that the motion essentially goes down to zero. And we want to see that again. We can go to the playbacks, hit the play button. It is processing. I'm going to crank up the speed, hit the play button. And so there you can see how we have the force acting and the spring, and then it ends up getting dampened over time. So there you can see the effect of multiple different dynamic quantities, forces, springs, and dampers inside of our mechanism. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.